announced on Saturday by the Election Commission of India. So uh, today we will be talking about Aizawl district and uh, various details on what are the dates, what are the various steps that we have taken, what are our uh, major numbers, how many voters do we have, how many polling stations do we have. So I'll, I'll get into it. So uh, the general election to Lok Sabha for one parliamentary constituency for Mizoram, the whole state is one uh, parliamentary constituency, was announced on Saturday. And uh, we are in the first phase of, uh, of the election. So our poll day will be 19th of April, which is about five weeks from now, four and a half weeks from now. Uh, the date of issue of Gazette notification will be 20th March, that is on Wednesday, day after tomorrow. So after that, uh, nominations can be filed, and the last date for um, filing of nominations will be 27th of March. Uh, I am the returning officer for the polling for this uh, entire seat. So uh, the nominations are to be filed. All the candidates are requested to come to my office whenever they want to uh, come and file their nomination. Uh, date of uh, scrutiny, last date for making nomination will be 27th, as I said. And date of scrutiny of nominations will be 28th. That is the next day. And uh, last date for withdrawal of candidature is 30th. So till 30th, if anybody wants to withdraw. And finally, 19th will be our poll. And um, counting will be held on 4th of June when all the phases of the election throughout the country are completed. Then, then we will have counting on 4th of June. And by 6th, we have to finish all the election-related activities, 6th of June. So now I come to our, uh, our district and uh, our uh, statistics and our numbers. So uh, we have recently concluded the, uh, the special summary division where our electoral role has been updated for anybody turning 18 as of 1st January 2024. So, um, as of now, we have a total of 2,90,058 voters, of which 1,53,480 are female voters, and male voters are 1,34,843. So uh, as we all know that female voters for us is much more than uh, male voters. Service voters, we have 1,735. The Il, the the AC we have 12 ACs as you all know and the AC with the maximum number of voters is Aizawl West 1 which is 30,094 voters and AC with the lowest number of uh, voters is Tuiwal Tuiwal AC 17,899 uh, voters the polling station with maximum number of voters is Zemabok 8 that is 1,483 voters. And the polling station with the least number of voters is Chanchwana Kapui in Tuiwal AC. Uh, they have only 86 uh, voters. Our, we have a good gender ratio of 1,138. And uh, uh, the voters of the age group of 18 to 19 years, that is we call the young voters, that is 10,131. So um, senior citizens, that is uh, above the age of 85 years. Right now I'm talking about number of citizens above the age of 85 years. That is 1,493. And uh, persons with disability electors, we have 778 as per our uh, electoral roll. As you all know, we have 321 polling stations, of which 257 are urban polling stations and 64 are rural polling stations. This time, we have not uh, had any increase in the total number of polling stations. Last time, uh, Saitwal district was also part of Aizawl, so therefore, the uh, number of polling stations has not increased for us. Now I come to, uh, so those were our numbers of various uh, you know, statistics. Now I come to the poll preparedness that we have done and that we will be doing in the coming uh, few uh, weeks. Polling stations, we have 321. Of this, women-managed polling stations will be four per AC. So uh, 48 
polling stations will be will be managed by women and uh, this is uh, something quite unique to this place that in other parts of the country uh, it is very difficult to even meet the minimum number whereas here uh, we can we can do as much as anybody tells us so we this time we'll be having 48 last time we had 36 so we have increased it this time uh, we have also proposed one uh, one polling station which will be, which will be managed by people with uh, disabilities so um, this we have identified the team and uh, this is a first time last time we had not done this so this time this is a new addition that we are doing uh, right now we are uh, doing our process of vulnerability mapping uh, that is identifying which are the critical polling stations which are polling stations where voters uh, may have certain uh, doubts or certain fears so we we are in the process of completely uh, you know, acknowledging that and to put in place uh, ways and measures to prevent that and to encourage all voters to come out and vote without any fear. So as you know, last time we had a postal ballot and home voting facility, which was, uh, uh, which was where our teams went down to the uh, houses of the voters and they cast their postal ballot sitting at home. So this time also we will be having that facility and uh, it is for PWD voters having disability certificate that is 40% disability certified by the, uh, um, by the particular uh, hospital, social welfare. They, there is a, a, a benchmark disability certificate. So uh, those voters plus senior citizens as per the election commission of India, uh, it will be 85 plus. So, uh, voters who are 85 plus, they will be given facility of home voting. So, for this, uh, now how to do this is that I, I appeal to all eligible voters, voters who are eligible for home voting to contact their BLO and to fill form 12D. This, this form will be available with your BLOs within five days of the notification. So, notification will happen on 20th, so by 25th. By 25th, uh, the form needs to come back to us because we also need to then plan our teams and to uh, plan their routes, how many teams, where all will they go. So for that purpose, it is, uh, it is important that within five days, if you can all apply. Uh, BLOs will be uh, told about this. So you, uh, I request people to just contact their, their nearby uh, BLO. For those who don't know who their BLO is, they can just feed in uh, on NBSP portal, they can just put in their EPIC number and it gives all details. Who is your RO, who is your BLO, who is your, um, all, all your details, your address, if any form was filled up in your name, everything is available on the, uh, on the NBSP portal. Now I come to election expenditure monitoring. So uh, in the endeavor to make elections fair and transparent, and to provide a level playing field to all the candidates. Uh, there are many, many measures which have been put in place. So uh, election expenditure monitoring is one of the main uh, chapters in that. We have uh, flying squads which have been activated since the announcement of the election. So um, any, any kind of complaint that comes to us that will be checked by the flying squad then and there within, uh, within matter of minutes. So uh, we have flying squads, we have static surveillance team, we have video surveillance team, video viewing team, accounting team, and assistant expenditure observers. So all of them have been trained and uh, they have been assigned their teams, their ACs, and they are in place now. And uh, we also have, as you all know, the media certification and monitoring committee. So uh, my request to, uh, all our media friends is that if you feel that there is any case of paid news or news which is motivated, you please let us know so that we can uh, take the appropriate steps. We will be having a media monitoring uh, cell where we will also be monitoring from our side, but uh, you, are the, you are our eyes and ears, so please uh, do tell us uh, if there is any kind of complaint that you feel that needs to be taken care of. We also have the Sea Vigil app where uh, any citizen can just take a picture of any irregularity and there is a system of um, 
FST, RO, that has to respond to that complaint within 100 minutes. So uh, this is also a very good uh, <coughs> facility which is available to the citizens. So uh, now I come to training. Most all of our various teams, various officers, micro observers, they have all been police officers, they have all been given training and they are ready uh, to take up their duties uh, during the election. Uh, coming to the first training of the polling parties, that will be conducted on 26th and 27th of March. So appointment letters for polling personnel have been, they have been, uh, the appointment letters are ready and they have already, the dispatch has already started. So 26th, 27th will be the first training and then subsequently uh, we will be deciding the uh, second and the third training also. Now I come to the most important part. All this is very, you know, you know all of it mostly. Now I come to sweep. So uh, Mizoram last time uh, voter turnout was slightly lower than the national average. So uh, it is, we have to really put in a lot of effort to tell people to not take this election very lightly and to come and vote because in the AC, uh, in the assembly election, we have such a good turnout. We have one of the highest in the country. So here also we should at least, you know, reach the national average. We should not be behind national average. So we will be taking up various sweep activities and uh, we will also be having a newspaper editorial competition like we had last time. So it's my request that if you can all partner with us to encourage uh, everybody to come out and vote because especially as all being an urban area, we all have so many uh, important works, important pre-engagements that sometimes, especially for MP election, we <coughs> may be a little less sensitive to, to the things. So this is something I think we really need to work on because uh, the, the MP who is representing us in the parliament uh, holds a lot of power for us, you know, in terms of getting us aid, putting up our point of view there. So it's, it's very important to have representation of the right person in, in the parliament. So um, my request is to uh, everybody to, to come and vote and it's, uh, we will be taking up various activities in schools and colleges and various localities, booths where voter turnout has been uh, poor in the last election. Uh, now I come to EVMs. Uh, we have Ballot unit 514, control units 523, and VVPads 541. So we are at about 160 to 169 percent reserve. So this much reserve uh, should be should be good for us. Uh, FLC has been done first level check. That is, FLC means first level check. <coughs> that has been done for all the uh, all the machines, and the machines are ready now. And uh, right now they are kept in the main strong room and after the first randomization of machines, they will be put in the AC wise uh, strong room. Each AC will have a separate uh, strong room. Uh, now finally I come to model code of conduct. As you all know, model code of conduct has been put into place since Saturday and we are all now part of the MCC and uh, so there is a ban on carrying and show of uh, unauthorized firearms, so all arms ammunitions are to, uh, to be kept inside and not to be brought out. And uh, of course, uh, not for the police personnel that is authorized. I'm saying unauthorized use of arms and carrying of arms and ammunitions is not allowed. Uh, defacement of property, so uh, we have to remove all kinds of political advertisement from unauthorized political advertisement from government buildings, from public buildings, and from private buildings. So private buildings, only I'm saying unauthorized. What is authorized uh, political uh, advertisement that can be allowed on um, private buildings. So this for this, our uh, flying squads will be going around and taking down all kinds of posters which are, uh, which are of political nature. And uh, finally, I want, uh, I, I want to appeal to all our political parties and to various departments to follow the, the model code of conduct and we should have a peaceful campaign like, like we have mostly in Mizoram, uh, where we respect each other, we, we respect other parties and we have a healthy debate 
So um, I think it goes without saying. I really don't need to say it again. So that is the main things that I wanted to cover. And it is finally I want to appeal to the people, to the media, and to political parties that let's have a free and fair and transparent and peaceful election. So thank you so much. And uh, we can have some questions now. And another thing, I am the RO returning officer, and we have two AROs here. That is, uh, my first ARO is Pooh Isaac. If you can just introduce yourself. <coughs> oh, okay. Oh, yes, yes. So both my AROs are here. Mm. I didn't recognize you. So they are the AROs, so in case you want to approach them, they will also be available for the whole period of the election.